I'm Officer Cadet Martinez Chung, and in this lesson, we will go over the fuselage and the empennage. But first off, we have to discuss what is an airplane. All right, an airplane is defined by the Canadian Aviation Regulations, or CARS for short, which is the law that governs aviation in Canada. According to those, an airplane is defined as power-driven, heavier than air, and deriving its lift from aerodynamic reactions on surfaces that remain fixed under given conditions of flight. The last point is just put in, in English is just it's a fixed wing aircraft. The wings stay put, they don't spin like in a helicopter. Alright? Now here's a little bit of a question for you. Is a glider an airplane? I'll let you think about that for a second. Right. In fact, a glider is not an airplane. Because while it is heavier than air, and it is a fixed-wing aircraft, it is not power-driven. Therefore, a glider is not an airplane, but it is an aircraft. Alright, Air airplanes are classified in different ways. One of them is the number of wings and the position of said wings, rather than the fuselage. We will go over this in a future lesson. You can also classify them by the number of engines, and finally, by their undercarriage or landing gear configuration. Again, more on this in future lessons. Behold, the airplane. Alright, so these are the essential components of an airplane. First off, you have the wings, then the landing gear or the undercarriage. Next up is the fuselage. And then the tail section or empennage. Empennage is just a fancy French word for tail section. And finally, a propulsion system. All right, let's go over the fuselage first. All right, so the fuselage is the part that makes up the central body of the airplane. All right, this is where you find the crew, passengers, cargo, pilots. Almost all other parts of the aircraft are attached to the fuselage in some way. And there are two types of fuselages, truss type and monocoque. First off is the truss type fuselage. This type of fuselage is made up of tubes of either wood or metal and they're welded or bolted together. Right. Long jaws are the principal member of this fuselage. Right? They run lengthwise and our braids are held together by vertical and diagonal members. So, as you can see, think of it kind of like the right flyer. Early, in early airplanes, they used to be truss type. Next up is the monocoque. All right, again, this is French for single shell. Right? It is made up of rounded formers or bulkheads, and they're held together by stringers. All right? The formers and the bulkheads carry most of the load in this structure. And then there's a skin that covers the fuselage and carries a little bit of the load, not much though. So this type of fuselage you will usually find in more World War II-ish aircraft, kind of like a shell. All right? Modern day aircraft, they have usually a combination of both, so both monocoque and truss type. Alright, confirmation stage. What are the laundrons the principal member of? I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, and the answer is trust that fuselage. Next up, an airplane is defined as A, power driven and heavier than air, B, deriving lift from fixed surfaces in flight, C, all of the above, or D, none of the above. I'll give you a second to think about it. And the answer is C, all of the above. Alrighty, moving on. Now the empennage is attached to the rear of the fuselage, that's also known as the tail. It's literally just a fancy word for tail. Alright, so components of the empennage. First off, we have the horizontal stabilizer. They are a fixed, non movable section of the tail plane, sitting horizontally. Alright. Next up is the elevator. You can kind of see where I actually learned how to use PowerPoint now. Anyways, so the elevator is the movable section of the tail. 
is hinged at the trailing edge or the back of the horizontal stabilizer. So it's the part of the horizontal stabilizer that moves. Next up, we have the vertical stabilizer, also known as the fin. All right, this is the fixed vertical section of the tail, so fixed vertical, it does not move. And then we have the rudder. This is the movable vertical section, you just hinge at the back of the fin. So vertical section, but this part moves. Another thing you should know about is what we call a canard. Right. A canard is a horizontal stabilizer located at the front of the airplane, as opposed to the rear. Okay. This is usually found on modern aircraft, and they, they have their own pros and cons, which will go beyond the scope of this course. And next we have what we call a stabilator. All right. What a stabilator is, is a single part, part that replaces both the horizontal stabilizer, which doesn't move, and the elevator, which moves. All right. In this case, the whole part moves as one, as opposed to only the elevator. As you can see in this GIF right here, the whole entire thing is moving. All right, confirmation stage. Yeah. What is the name given to the movable surface attached to the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer? Is it A, the horizontal stabilizer, B, the vertical stabilizer, C, the rudder, or D, the elevator. I'll give you a second to think about it. And the answer is D, the elevator. Remember, the elevator is the part that actually moves. Next up, we choose a movable tail section. Is it A, the horizontal stabilizer, B, the fin, C, the vertical stabilizer, or D, the stabilator. I'll give you a second to think about it. And the answer is D, the stabilator. Remember, in a sta stabilator, the whole entire horizontal part of the tail moves. Whereas in the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer and the fin, they don't move at all. The fin and vertical stabilizer are essentially the same thing. Alright, and that concludes this lesson. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, queries, or random outbursts, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching, and happy landings!